Good day everyone, my name is Mr. Emil Viander and welcome to General Physics 1. Today's lesson is about the vector component method. As a review, last time we discussed the graphical method. We plotted the vector so that we could find the resultant vector. Last time, we used a ruler and protractor, but for today, we will only use a calculator. Vector component method is a process of adding vectors. And based from the name, we will rely on the x and y components for each vector in finding the resultant vector. The resultant vector is the sum of all individual vectors, which still has magnitude and direction. For today's lesson, we are going to use mathematics in finding the resultant vector. To find the magnitude of the resultant vector, we will only use the Pythagorean theorem by squaring our x and y components. As for the direction, we will use trigonomic functions, mainly the tangent function, which uses the formula tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent sides. Now let's try an easy example. 4 meters east plus 2 meters north. Since we have only two vectors, we see that one vector is heading towards the east, which is our x component, and the other headed towards the north, which is our y component. We should be able to instantly use the Pythagorean theorem with these components. We need to derive an equation for the resultant vector. So we apply square root on both sides of the equation. Next, we substitute the values. Now, I prefer three significant figures, so let's reduce the number. We arrive at 4.47 as our magnitude. I know we shouldn't draw, but since it's our first time, we need to visualize our right triangle in order to determine which is the opposite and adjacent sides. Now for the direction, we will use the tangent function and isolate the theta to find our angle. Determine which is the opposite and adjacent side. Then substitute the given values. We get 26.5 degrees. Since our angle is drawn from the east and going upward heading north, we read this as 26.5 north of east. We find our resultant vector to be 4.47 meters, 26.5 degrees, north of east. But our direction may have a different version. What if we place our y component first in finding the resultant vector? Did it affect the magnitude of the resultant vector? No. Did it move the resultant vector? No. What we're going to do is to represent the direction differently. Now if we draw it this way, where can we find the angle theta? Now it's pointing to the north, so our opposite and adjacent side switches. Finding the value of our angle theta, we find it's 63.4 piece of north. If you notice, we reverse the directions since we move the angle at the other side. So it's important to be mindful of which component is your opposite and which component is your adjacent side. Comparing the two angles, first we got 26.5 degrees, then we got 63.4 degrees. Getting the sum of the two angles, it's exactly 90 degrees, which is equivalent to the angle of one quadrant. Let's add three vectors, four meters east, 2 meters north, and now having more vectors needs us to organize our data into tables. Since our third vector has both x and y component, we would need a different approach. First, we will look for the x and y components of all the vectors. Now for our first vector, it was only headed towards the east or the positive x-axis, so we have 4 meters for the x component and zero for the y component. 
the second vector was only headed north for the positive y-axis. So we have 0 for the x component and 2 meters for the y component. But for the third vector, we have both x and y components. Let's represent our third vector as c. And for us to find its y and x components, we need to determine where is the angle theta. If it's north of west, the angle should start from the west headed towards the north. Where is the opposite side? We have the y component to be the opposite side. So we represent the c as a resultant vector. Cy is the y component of the resultant vector. We have the formula Cy is equal to C sine theta. Substitute and we get the y component to be 1.56 meters. Now for the x component Cx, the adjacent side. Cx is equal to C cosine theta. Substitute and we get the x component to be 1.25 meters. Placing our answers, notice that we added the negative sign to our x component 1.25 meters because this x component is headed towards the west. And if it's headed in that direction, we need to place a negative sign. Now our table is complete. Our next step is to get the sum for the x and y components. Their sum will represent the components for our resultant vector. So we have 2.75 meters for the x component of the resultant vectors and 3.36 meters for the y component of the resultant vector. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Substitute the values. We get 4 dot a long answer. So if we want three significant figures, we just get 4.50 meters. By looking at the given values and direction, where can we place the angle theta? Now we use the formula for the angle theta. Determine which is the opposite side and adjacent side. Substitute the given values. So we have 52.3 degrees. So our resultant vector is 4.50 meters, 52.3 degrees north of east. Now let's reveal the answers for our previous assignment. We have number 1, 11.1 meters, 63 degrees south of west. Number 2, it's 10.6 meters, 48.8 degrees south of west. Number 3, 19.7 meters, 22.6 degrees north of west. Now it's assignment time. Direction. Number one, write your complete solution. Number two, express your final answer with three significant figures. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video. Goodbye!